Hello and welcome to part 2 of my tutorial on how to make a browser game. In this episode we will start coding. Uh, we will uh, create our project and just do some basic HTML coding. Uh, so let's uh, let's start. I have booted up uh, NetBeans which we installed in episode 1 and we are going to create a project. So with file new project and we will just create a normal PHP, PHP application. Uh, so we will give it a name, let's just call it something like browser game, game browser? I can't spell, browser game. Uh, I generally don't like to have spaces because, well, I don't like spaces. Uh, so I'm just gonna put this in the uh, in the um, WAMP www directory. And I'm just gonna create a new browser game. There we go, here's a new folder for it. Let's go with that location, that's fine. And next, uh, local website, yeah, sure. And we don't need, need any framework. Let's just continue and finish. So, like that, let's close the start page. So let's start by just creating a simple page. So we go to uh, uh, sort of size a new, uh, new PHP file. Let's just call it index.php. So, okay, just remove this. Uh, so we're just going to start with basic HTML code. And uh, pretty much uh, all HTML is like built with tags like these. And everything you uh, type in between will be, well, in between these two tags. Uh, so just for a, a simple document, we will give it a, a head area and a body area. And uh, the uh, head is uh, where you, you you can include files. You can you can get a title of the page. Let's get a title. Uh, title uh, my browser game. And the body right now is just empty. If we were to go to this page, uh, let's see the results. Uh, local hosts. What do we call it? Browser game and uh, index.php. So you can see it, it's all blank, but up here you can see that my browser game, uh, the head is where you would like to change this icon as well, uh, if, if you wanted to. We're just gonna keep it as the WAMP default. So if we were to type in some text in between the body tag, then it will be displayed on the, uh, hang on, on the web page like that. So, hello world. Hey! Um, so there's plenty of tags we can use. Just for example, we can use like the h1 tag, which is a header. Uh, so if we put hello world inside h1, we go back to our page, we refresh it. You can see it became a lot larger. It has some styles attached to it, so um, there is like spacing above it and also underneath it. Uh, so if we type something down here, hi, and we go back and update, you can see that there is a lot of spacing in between. Um, so the the H1 is just like a a, a standard heading class uh, or heading tag, but we don't need that for now. Or we, we can keep it. Why not? Uh, so more than this, there are styles that we can use. Usually you don't write them like this, but you can write them in line like this. Uh, we can say background black. So what we say here is that for the the body element, uh, the styles we should use is to set background to uh, the color black. So if we go back to the page, we update it, everything is black. So we cannot see our text anymore. Uh, so, let's change the color of the text. That's just color and white. Uh, and this is what's called CSS code. And the, every command is separated by a semicolon. So, if we go back, we refresh, and we can see hello world. Cool. Uh, so, generally, what, what you do is you create a CSS file 
where you keep all of your styles so you don't write them uh, at every place like this um, and you just include that file in the header like this um, so, so let's do that let's remove this or you know what let's just uh, let's just copy that so if we remove that and we include a we create a CSS file uh, cascading style sheet CSS uh, let's just call it something like default default.css that's fine so oh well we don't need that uh, so the the syntax here is uh, you can use this on any element you want you can just type like body and it has to be in between these tags so like that and in here we can we can just write the exact same things just like this if we were to refresh the page now nothing would work why because we never included this file uh, this default.css file in our index.php file. So we will include it here by writing link well, style sheet. Oops, like that. And uh, the type is uh, annoying editor. And the place to get it like this. Uh, so let's just write default. Dot CSS. So if we had this in a different folder than the index file, we would have to write a uh, more direct path like folder default. If it wasn't a folder name folder. Uh, so let's close that. And now we will go to the page and update it. And there we go. Uh, so generally speaking, uh, you can only have one body, uh, one body tag. Uh, but but let's say let's say we wanted to let's just do like this just so you will um, you, just so you'll see the effect here. Hello world again. If we update this, uh, you can see that they are both the uh, same uh, color. Um, if we go into our default.css file and we change everything for the h1 header, let's. Let's make it red. Uh, as you as you might see, th this will conflict with the body, the body in H1, and a general rule of thumb is like the closer to the source, um, is the rule that will apply. Uh, so because our H1 is like directly is really close to this text. <laughs> Uh, this will be applied. Um, the, the text will be red because the body color is applied up here, and then we go in here and we overwrite it with the color red. Uh, so let's see if that works. It does. Uh, so of course here here we could just remove the color if we wanted to, um, but but let's leave it in. Let's leave it in. Let's uh, leave it in like that, and we can just have some random text because this random text will be white. white. Uh, so, so the problem with this is if we wanted the top text to be blue and the bottom text to be uh, red, we couldn't do this. Not, not in the manner we have done it so far. Uh, so what you can do is instead of uh, instead of giving these, uh, making the rule for the entire h1 class uh, h1 uh, element we can type in class and we just give it give it a name uh, let, let's call it uh, blue blue text let's call it blue text and for this h1 we will call it red text simple like that and then in in our uh, in here we will just define that uh, when you are changing an entire element you just write the element like this when you're changing a class you write a dot and a name and we can see that our editor here is helping us helping us out because we only have two classes so it looks through it looks uh, through the other files and uh, helps with that so 
color blue and the red text color red. So if we refresh this we can see that the top text is blue and the bottom text is red. And the same rule applies here because we still we changed the h1 tag to red but the class uh, overrules that because that is even like later in the chain. Uh, there is one more way we can overrule this and that is if we also ri write an inline style. If we write style here and we say color, uh, not white, we already have that one. Uh, let's call it green. Color green. Uh, this one will be the one in effect. So let's see if that works. Yep. So hello world is green. Uh, but generally speaking, you don't want to use uh, style inline styles like this, because once you get up to a lot of elements, if you want to change something with all of them, uh, you can't. You need to manually change every single one. But if you just keep the class, uh, then you can just change the class and they will all change. You can have multiple classes as well. We can have this one with the large class. So let's create the large class. Large. And let's give it a uh, let's give it a uh, font size of uh, 60 pixels. So we'll increase the size. So it will be blue and it will be large. And there we go. It's large, it's blue, it's wonderful. All right, so I think that's it. And I was I only meant to cover HTML in this uh, episode, but we also uh, covered CSS. So uh, that's great. Uh, so let's continue with uh, PHP in the next episode. I hope to see you then. Until then, take care.